In this video, we're going to have an introduction to exponential functions. Uh, we're going to define and identify exponential functions, graph basic exponential functions, and define exponential growth and decay functions. An exponential function is a function that can be written in the form f of x equals a times b to the x power. Uh, the number a uh, must be non-zero in this equation and um, is called the initial value of our exponential function. We'll see why this is the case when we look at some applications of exponential functions later. Uh, the number b must be positive and not equal to 1. Um, and that number is called the base, uh, since it serves as the base of our variable x, where x is that exponent. The variable being in the exponent of the expression um, is actually the key characteristic um, or property of an exponential function. Exponential functions are most commonly used to model situations that involve a percent change of some quantity. Um, some very simple and common examples of this are things like compound interest, where interest is earned based on the amount that is either deposited or borrowed, uh, the number of bacteria um, in a culture, or the, uh, the amount of a radioactive element um, that is decaying that is available at, after a certain time. In this example, we want to determine which of the following are not exponential functions. So we see we have four functions here, f, g, h, and j, all given by various rules. Um, and what we need to do is just determine if they satisfy that definition um, in the sense that it can be written in this form, a times b to the x power. The first one, f of x equals 4 to the 3 times the quantity x minus 2 power, doesn't immediately uh, look like a, a, this a to the b to a times b to the x form. However, by playing around with properties of exponents, we could easily write this in that particular form. We have a number four, which would be our base, raised to, um, in this case, a linear power of x. Um, and this could be rearranged into the appropriate form. And so this first one will actually be exponential um, and even though it doesn't exactly meet our criteria as written. Um, the second one, g of x equals x cubed. Uh, this is not um, an exponential function. Um, this one in particular the, um, does not have a variable in the exponent. The variable here um, is the base, and the exponent is fixed. It's the number 3. So this is an example of a power function. And power functions and exponential functions are very different. For h of x, we have the formula 1 third to the x. Right? 1 third is a positive number that is not equal to 1, um, and so this would be an exponential function. It would have a base of 1 third and an initial value of 1, uh, since there is sort of an implicit 1 times in front of that 1 third to the x. j of x equals negative 2 to the x might um, initially strike you as an exponential function, but notice that negative 2 is not a positive number. Um, and so in this case, um, our base of what looks to be um, our exponential is a negative number, and that is not allowed. The base of an exponential function must always be positive and not equal to 1, and that condition fails for this function j. Now that we know how to identify an exponential function, our next step is to quickly look at the graphs of exponential functions and look at the general shape that these graphs have. In order to do that, we're going to look at the graph of two different exponential functions. First, we're going to consider the function f of x equals 2 to the x power. Like with most types of functions, in order to come up with the general shape of a graph, what we're going to do is make a table of values, uh, choosing different values of x, substituting them into our function to get our y values, plotting our points on a grid, and then sketching the curve. Um, and so here I've listed, um, it looks like six x values, one, two, three, zero, negative one, and negative two that I'm going to substitute into my function. I'm going to raise two to each of these powers and then plot our corresponding points. So when x is one, our corresponding output value would be two to the one, which of course is just two. Um, so we get the point one comma two, um, and that is plotted right here. Um, we also, uh, when x is 2, we get 2 to the second power, which is 4. So our second point here is 2, is two comma 4, and that point on the grid is here, with an x value of 2 and a y value of 4. 
Uh, when x is 3, we get an output function value of 2 cubed, which is 8. So we have the point 3, 8, and that point is right here. Okay, now we go we sort of go back down. When x is 0, we give 2 to the 0. Um, by a property of exponents, any um, positive number like 2 raised to the 0 power is always going to be 1. And so we get the point 0, 1, which plots here. Uh, for negative exponents, it um, works much the same. We just have to remember how negative exponents behave. When x is negative 1, we get 2 to the negative 1 power. Um, a negative exponent means we move that number to the denominator and make the exponent positive. So we get 1 over 2 to the 1, or 1 half. Um, so we have the point negative 1, comma 1 half, which is right around there. And for x is negative 2, I have 2 to the negative 2, which will be 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth. So we get the point negative 2, 1 fourth. Of course, it's a little hard to draw on the grid that I have, um, but it's going to be somewhere around there. If we wanted to make, a, a make more points, we certainly could. Um, as x gets more negative, notice our fractions are going to be positive, but get closer and closer to 0, which means as x gets negative, our graph kind of gets, clo gets closer and closer here to the x-axis, but it will never actually touch the x-axis. And if we took more larger positive values of x, we'd see our function gets bigger and bigger um, at a, an increasing rate. And so we see that the graph would look something like this. The second example of an exponential graph is going to be the function f of x equals 1 half to the x. The process of graphing this function is exactly the same as the previous example. We're going to fill in the table here of values for various values of x, plot the points, and sketch the curve um, but that connects them. If you'd like, you're welcome to pause the video and try to compute the table and graph on your own, um, and the correct values in the table and graph will show in just a couple seconds. All right, so here are all of the various values of 1 half to the x for these particular values of x and the corresponding points and graph of this particular function. Notice that when we had negative values of x, the negative exponent um, interchanged the numerator and denominator of our fraction 1 half, um, and the, the, the uh, exponent became positive. So 1 half to the negative second power, for example, became 2 over 1, the reciprocal of 1 half, raised to the positive 2 power. And that's easily seen to be 4. Now comparing this graph with the one in the previous example, uh, we see that they have somewhat similar shapes. They just point in different directions. Uh, this graph, for example, of 1 half to the x um, is getting smaller and smaller, getting closer and closer to 0 as x gets larger. And as x gets more negative, the graph, uh, the y values get um, larger and larger. On the other hand, in the previous graph with the function of 2 to the x, we saw the exact opposite happen. As x got large, so did the values of the function. And as x got more negative, the function values got closer and closer to 0. Uh, these two graphs are representative of all exponential functions, by which we mean that um, every, the graph of every f exponential function looks relatively similar and has the same general shape as one of these two graphs. Um, and, the, and which one it is similar to is determined by the value of the base of the exponential function. So if the base b is bigger than 1, the function a times b to the x um, is called an exponential growth function. And it's called an exponential growth function because the general shape of uh, this function when the base b is greater than 1 is that of the graph of f of x equals 2 to the x that we just graphed. Uh, it looks like this first graph here um, about, about halfway down the page on the right side. Um, notice I did not label the x and y axes here um, because we don't know exactly what, the, what points this graph goes through, um, but we do know it has this general shape um, that when we move further and further to the left, that is when x gets more negative, the graph will get closer and closer to the x-axis, and as x gets larger and larger, the function value will shoot up um, and get larger and larger as we go. On the other hand, when um, our base b is somewhere between 0 and 1, 
the function f of x equals a times b to dx is an exponential decay function. Um, it's called a decay function because the function is going to get smaller as x gets larger. Um, its graph will look um, much like and have the same general shape as that of the function f of x equals 1 half x that we considered a few minutes ago. It looks like the graph in the bottom right corner. As x gets larger and we moved to further to the right, the function values will get closer and closer to zero. They will be decaying. And as x gets more negative, the function values will increase. Of course, if we want an exact graph for a function, we can go back to plotting points um, and, so, and sketching the curve through those points. Uh, but if we just want a general idea of what this function will do, in that whether it's going to get closer and closer to zero in a certain direction or uh, get very large in a certain direction, all we really need to do is consider the base and whether it is um, bigger than one or between zero and one. Notice the initial value a, while it will affect the graph, um, it will not affect which of these two general shapes the function's graph will have. We end this video with an example um, where we will evaluate um, an exponential function at a given value. In this example, we're given a function f of x defined by 5 times 3 raised to the x plus first power. This is an exponential function because we have an x in the exponent. Um, and we want to evaluate f of 2. In other words, we want to evaluate the function when x is equal to 2. Uh, so in general, in order to evaluate f of 2, we replace the variable x with a 2 and compute the appropriate value. So here we get 5 times 3 raised to the 2 plus 1 power. Uh, we want to go ahead and compute that, that complete exponent. 2 plus 1, of course, is 3. So we have 5 times 3 cubed. At this point, um, it would be very easy to make a mistake and to go ahead and multiply 5 and 3 to get 15 and then raise that to the third power. However, um, it's important to remember the order of operations here that exponents are computed before multiplication. So here we're going to compute 3 cubed first, and that will be 27. And then the last step is to compute 5 times 27, uh, which is 135. And so f of 2 is equal to 135. If we take the x value of 2, input it into this function f of x equals 5 times 3 raised to the x plus first power, uh, the output here would be 135.